Hey crafters, it's Karen. I've seen a number of comments in various groups about people saying that they're a little bit confused about how the print then cut works with the Cricut Explore. They're not understanding how the Cricut determines the size of the image and all that stuff. So I'm going to show you from start to finish, starting from this blank screen, where I go, what I do, and how it's done. First thing I need to do is get to design space. So if you haven't done it before, type in cricket.com and that will bring you to Cricut's main site. From there, there's a link called Cricut Design Space. Click that and that will bring you to Design Space. I've created a shortcut on my desktop and that's what I use all the time. You can also create that for yourself. Um, sorry, it's not a shortcut on my desktop, it's a shortcut here on my browser. You can do that, you can bookmark it, whatever you like, or you can go to that main page all the time. Once you've done that, often, the, well, you won't be shown as logged in here, so I'm logging out so that this is what it would look like if you were not logged in. And then I would click here to log in. I'm going to add my password. It automatically knows my email address because I've ticked the remember me box over here. How do you get an account like that if you don't have one yet? Back at Cricut.com, when you click Design Space, it would have taken you through those steps. So I'm just going to enter my password, and it's going to log me in, and now I'm in Design Space. And I want to create a new project. And I'm just going to insert a simple image from one of the image sets. Cartridges are called image sets in Design Space. Uh, let's see, what cute image am I going to take? I see everybody making owls, so I'm going to make an owl. This guy's cute. So I'm going to insert that, and that's now on my mat. I want him to be larger than this. So I'm going to make him... Notice the, um, the gray square to the right and top of the image. It shows you the height and width of your image. So that's pretty tall. That's Let's say we would make him about four inches. You can have exact measurements by typing in the edit over here and this is where you determine the size of your cut. The size of the printer paper is determined by the program. It's eight and a half by eleven right now. There is no other size available. This is the only size you can do. So for your image itself you would change the size in here. You type in whatever you want Let's say if I wanted the width to be exactly three inches, then it would set the height for me accordingly if I did not clear the lock button. Um, if I clear that button, then I can set both of these sizes, but my image will get a little wonky maybe. You see, he's too tall now. You can always drag it out as well. So that's really basic stuff, but showing you how to change the size of your image. Once I've done that, and I'm just going through basic, basic stuff, nothing fancy at all, just to get you going on this. Then I click my Go button, and that's going to display the parts on my mat. Ah, you see, I forgot a step. But this is important. If you start to see multiple screens like this and you're expecting to cut out one flat image, it means you've made a mistake for your print then cut. And if you look over here, you're going to see these cut icons, the scissor icons. That means your image will be cut onto four different mats for the different colors. That's just cutting. That's not printing, then cutting. So I'm going to click the X and go back. And what I need to do is I need to flatten my image over here in the layers box. Once I click flatten, this image becomes one flat piece and it will be print and cut as one piece. The only other thing I'm going to show you is if you wanted to make this multiple pieces because you want to match a color that goes with your layout or whatever, um, you can now take this and unflatten it. Now it still has printer icons next to it so that means that all those pieces will be print and cut and you can then layer them. So what you need to do then is you need to move the pieces apart and then you'll see what's going to print and cut in what color and how many colors you've got.
So now I'm going to press the Go button, click the Go button. Now it's still seeing four layers because it just had that in memory from before. Now you can see that this is all going to it's going to print it's going to print and cut onto two pieces of paper because I've made it that size. Whether it's going to print then cut or only cut is going to be determined by the icons that you see here. And what this means is that at this size, these images split out the way they are, it's not going to be big enough to fit on one piece of paper. That's going to fit on two pieces of paper. And you'll see here on your mat, this is your 12 by 12 mat, this is your 8.5 by 11 paper, and this is what fits on this paper. You can move this around a little bit, but not very much. And then your second sheet will be this blue part of the owl. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to undo all of that and we're just going to print this out as one flat image. So go back and get my image. It's this guy over here. And I'm going to make him four inches. And if you're wondering what the maximum sizes are of the images that you can cut, I did post a document to the file section of the group. It's the 10 steps about print and cut. It's a PDF document that you can find in there that lists the, the sizes depending on the browser that you're using. So this is my guy. So now I need to flatten him again because we've brought him back into the onto the mat. Flatten him. Now he's a print then cut guy. <laughs> and I'll click my go button. Now this is in my memory. This is not what's going to happen. It's thinking and now it's put the owl on the mat all as one piece and that's going to now print out onto my printer and then I'll be able to cut it with my Cricut. So I'm going to now click print and continue. So now it's going to print to my printer and before I let that happen I'm going to move my camera over there so that you can see it. It's pretty funny the props you have to use sometimes to make these videos. You have to see what I've got that camera sitting on to point at my printer. Anyway, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I have the right paper in my printer. My printer likes to have only the cardstock in it if I'm going to print onto cardstock. So I've removed my other paper and I'm going to explain how you set it so that your paper so that you know which side your paper is going to print on because when it's cardstock it doesn't matter but if you're using the printable vinyl or the printable sticker paper then it will matter. My printer needs or what needs me to place my my paper or my material face down into the printer so that this is the printing side and the way that I've determined that is I've written an X on the paper printed something and then found out whether what I printed was on the same side as the X or on the opposite side. So then that way I could determine which side my printer prints on. Every printer is different. So I'm putting my paper into the printer and it's just cardstock as I said so it doesn't matter which way it goes for that. I'll put this tray back on so things don't go into the wrong places. On the software I'm telling it that I need to change my printer. I'm using Chrome on a Mac, just so that you know what browser I'm using. So I need to change that here. And I'm going to use my Office Jet 7610, because that's my color inkjet printer. I will tell it to print. And you can see on the screen that this is the image that it's going to print for me. My Explorer needs to be turned on. Not for the printing, but it just needs to be turned on so that it knows it's on. Now I could have changed the print settings. I could have made it a high resolution print, but I just left it plain.
So it's now printed out of my printer, as you can see here. And these are the registration marks that the Explore is going to recognize. I'm going to switch screens again so that you'll be able to see it print, cut out on the Explore. Okay, so now I'm going to put my printed image onto my mat, up here at the corner. It doesn't even matter how straight it is because it's the registration marks that the Cricut cares about. Oops, just place that into the machine, load my mat, and go back to the software. So now it wants me to click retry and it's going to see my explorers turned on. Not sure what I cut last, so I'm going to go back and check that I've got it set to cardstock. It's vinyl, so that's it. I have to change this to cardstock, which is right down here. And the machine is now flashing here. This is the go button on the, on the Explorer. In the software, it's telling you, set the dial, and that's what I've done, and now press the go button on the machine to begin. So that's what I'm doing over here. I'm pressing the go button. And it's going to go and it's going to read all of those registration marks. It's going to take it a minute to do that. And then it will cut it out. This is all assuming that you've already done the calibration. Okay, so now it's going to switch and it's going to start reading the line going, or what I should say is the optical eye is going to go sideways. And it's going to read that vertical line. Now it's going to read over here. And it's going to go down to the next one. Now it's ready to cut. And it's cutting all around the image. Okay, it's done. So I'm going to take the mat out and I'm going to show you close up. When you look at the printed image, it might look a little off because you see something strange here. It doesn't sit exactly right over here. There seems to there seem to be two pointy ends at the end of the the, ta um, the wing. Look how the blue sits away from the blue here. It's not even. The same thing over here. It looks a little bit off, but that's because there's a bleed. Same thing over here. In the corner, there's that little bit of extra yellow. That's the bleed that the Explorer uses to make sure that your image is going to be exactly right once it's cut. And that doesn't matter if it's an image like this with thicker lines, or I, I should say a thicker image, or very delicate, thin lines. It works perfectly every time once it's calibrated properly. And look, what matters is that the amount of bleed left when you're done should be even all the way around. It does an exact, exact job. There was one thing I forgot to show you. I was saying that you could take an image and split out the pieces and print and then cut each of those different colors with your printer and the Explorer, but I didn't explain how you change the colors. So if I wanted to unflatten this and have separate pieces, and I was saying that you could match colors of a layout or pattern paper that you're using, what you do then is you click your image, you or you click it over here in the layers panel, and click the cut icon, the scissors icon I should say, and you can change the color here. You can also change an exact color you can use color codes in here 
you can move up and down in this color bar to change your color and when you're done you see that this piece is changing colors let me move down here let me go to a red let me go to a green and you'll see that it's changing colors all along you can also click directly in this box okay so that's how you change colors and then you go to the next one the only thing is once you've done that you need to flatten this again so that you can print that and it will be in that color so now this one if you want it okay that's a nice lime green owl let him have um, lighter yellow beak so I'm going to click my print icon here click the scissors icon I'm going to give him pale yellow beak and feet so there I've given him yellow beak and feet and I'll flatten that and now this is again to be printed here's another one I need to go in there and change those are his eyes um, I'm gonna give him blue eyes and I'm going to flatten that and the rest of this is going to be bright pink just cuz I decided um, let's see there's a nice bright pink <laughs> and we'll flatten that so that is all I wanted to show you Thank you so much for watching.